If this isn't a spit on all of you Kamala and Biden supporters, take a good fucking look. In the last attempt, they want to send $6 billion to Ukraine before they leave office. That is their priority. They're telling you our priority is to send money to fucking Ukraine. Not to fix the roads, not to take care of the people in Maui or North Carolina or... How much spit do you need in your face before you realize that that party was never for you? Now that's crazy. Them little clips basically saying that all of the racist, the actual racist people like David Duke, David Duke is a well-known racist. He was actually leader of a clan, Klansman, right? They all supported Kamal. Go figure, huh? Hey, come to the door, okay? Hey, what's going on? What's up? I don't need to talk to you. Hey, you're talking right here, man. What's up? Um, I need you to come outside and talk to me. Okay, why? Okay, I'm just asking. Okay, I'm in bed, man. You're scaring my dogs. If you have asked questions to ask, man, just ask them, dude. I'm dead. I need to ask you a person. Come on out. Ask him, like, dude, what the fuck's going on? Come on out. Come on out for what? What are you talking about? I need to talk to you. Come on out. Okay, talk to me. Come out here and talk to me. You talk to me? What's going on? I need you to come out face to face. All right, man. Well, I'm going back to bed. Come on out. No, what's going on? I'm going back to bed. Hell yeah, I'm going back to bed. Because what are they trying to do? And, and how we know if they real cops or not, man? It's a lot of strange stuff going on. Oh, what the fuck that is, man? Hey, stop playing, man. What the fuck that is, man? That's another dimension right there. I'm probably going through that and see all my past. What the fuck is that, man? The man said he'll go through there and probably see all his past. That's a media. That bitch. Well, that's a media, what? I'm laughing at you, dog. I don't even know what the fucking media is. But what you said is, that shit sounded good when you said it, bro. Bro, what the fuck is that, man? Yeah, that bitch was. Yeah, that bitch was. Schneider was showing samples of what he claimed were unknown exotic metals. He provided maps of the underground dumps and showed off dramatic scars that he claimed were from a violent skirmish with a non-human species deep underground. In January of 1996, Schneider was found dead in his home days after he mysteriously died of strangulation. Investigations were never completed and it was ruled a suicide. His evidence went missing. Before he died, Phil Schneider used his clearance to take investigative author Alex Christopher into the top underground levels of the Denver airport, where they took pictures of a long road heading off to multiple destinations. Built upon 53 square miles of land, 25 miles from downtown, the Denver airport was billions of dollars over budget. Different contractors were hired for each section, some of whom have come forward and claimed it would take days to show you what's down there. Inside the otherwise unimpressive airport, there is a capstone with cryptic Illuminati and Masonic imagery marking a time capsule buried beneath to be opened in 2094. The airport opened with a famous four-piece mural depicting biological warfare, death and destruction, the surrender of all national sovereignty, and the emergence of a new religion. On the floor, for no apparent reason, is what appears to be the symbol for gold and silver in a mining cart. A U A. Hmm. You know what? I still, I, I do feel like that at some point there is some type of secret society that doesn't want certain things to get out. And with that being said, 
it gotta be some some type of extraterrestrial activity going on somewhere underground on this earth i mean you know you, you really can't put it past you no know? you really can't Kamala Harris wrote the law. Kamala Harris did? Harris is the one who wrote the Legalized Stealing Act. Yes, it's called Safe Neighborhoods and Schools Act. <laughs> and the idea behind it was we would, reduce, again, address the mass incarceration problem. Prior to this law, thefts at $400 would um, be felony grand larceny. And this law changed it such that it would have to be above $950 to become a felony. Drug possession would no longer be a, a, a felony. It would be treated as a misdemeanor. So this is the law that legalized stealing and drug use. Correct. Effectively. Yes. Crazy, because the whole time it was a setup. So now it only has to be over $900 to be considered a felony? That's crazy. I'm not saying that stealing is a good thing, but people go through stuff. I mean, a lot of people steal, especially during times like this when the economy is shot to sh You know what I was trying to say. This was the only governmentally confirmed case of possession. How many noses does a monkey have? A completely unknown molecular compound was found in her food. Not a disease, not a parasite, an evil. In 1974, a group of researchers would get together and form what would be called the Atticus Institute. They decided that they were going to take a crack at one thing, the study of paranormal abilities in humans. Our goal was to conduct unbiased empirical research on exceptional human abilities, psychokinesis, ESP, precognition, things that are typically considered fringe science or parapsychology. And for two years, it goes about as well as you would expect. They find almost nothing. It wasn't until 1976 when a woman by the name of Judith Winstead was brought to their door. Can you please stop that, Can Judith? you please stop that, please? We'd really like to continue. We had about 10 different degrees between us, including one in medicine, three in psychology. We knew that was not normal. The thing about Judith Winstead is that she didn't have any special powers. She wasn't psychic, she wasn't telekinetic. It was something far older and far more incomprehensible than what any of these researchers could come up with. How do you choose your host? <laughs> That had to be something else to be there in that moment experiencing that. He is being treated not just as a former president, but almost as though he is a sitting president. As Boris, you just noted, getting a briefing from FEMA, getting a briefing from the National Guard, that is not something that is typically just offered to a candidate. The only good thing about what happened with this four-year disaster is that the people will understand when we fix our country, they'll be much more understanding than they would have been if we just went straight ahead and did it. This is the problem. This 12%. This 12% was the problem. This was the th this is the deciding factor. Out of all the races who voted Republican, this was the deciding factor with you Negro women of the downfall of this election. <laughs> we are the problem. Mind you, I don't vote. I have never voted. But this is sit back and watch y'all make complete asses out of yourselves, blaming your counterpart, blaming your opposite for something that 12% could never do. There's people who are non-white and other who did more for this side than we could ever do. Times three. <laughs> <That's a laughs> Y'all got on your pedestal with your little bullhorn talking about how you don't need men, you don't need black men, all black men do is lie, black men ain't shit, and as soon as you get to election, well, black men not voting for us, why they not doing nothing for us, why they even doing this for us? Now you on TikTok talking about, we, we not, we not, we not marching, we not pro, uh, protesting for none of y'all no more, y'all on your own, I'm lost. When did ever any victims of police brutality ever sent a memo out saying black women, please march and protest for us? Nobody did that. Nobody sent out that memo saying that you need to get to the streets with your bullhorn talking about social justice. No one asked you to do it, but you took it upon yourself because you want to be exalted above the man. So this is your, your foolishness. This is your doing. So you sit back, keep your mouth shut and take that L. Donald Trump's grandfather, Friedrich Trump, 
came to this country from Bavaria, a.k.a. Germany, in 1885 as a 16-year-old draft dodger. Among the jobs the teenage coward wound up doing here in America. Wow, did you hear her, man? Teenage coward. What a way to talk about a kid, an actual kid. Even though that's Trump's grandfather, he was a kid trying to run away from war. Like, no kid wants to go to war. We're working as a barber. You honestly sound pretty disgusting. You're talking about somebody who was at risk of being a child soldier coming to America, and you're saying that they are a draft dodger. I believe this was during the France and Prussian War, aka the France versus German War, where millions of people, including children, like Donald Trump's ancestor, how to go fight in a war. And I don't know what that has to do with Donald Trump at all, but just talking down on somebody who did not want to be a child soldier is pretty disgusting. So you are on a late night show and you support child slavery, which is essentially what being a child soldier is. It really is ridiculous that you are a late night show host. You're trying to be credible and you're trying to talk down on somebody for being a child soldier. I don't think you should have your job actually. Um, I think there's better people for your position who won't talk down on people for being child soldiers. This is what the party wants. They want people like me and you, who are in our 20s to go fight in wars. Heck, they would want a 16 year old as well. 16 year olds to go fight in wars as child soldiers. It's insane. Why on this? Are there any states where women face prosecution for having an abortion? No. Are there any states that criminalize miscarriage? No. Or that care for, any, uh, for a miscarriage? No. Are there any states that criminalize removing an ectopic pregnancy? No. Are there any states that prohibit life-saving care for the mother? No. Are there any states where women have to be actively dying for a, for a doctor to be able to act for her care? No. There's been a lot of rhetoric in this that I'm concerned pushes people away from getting access to health care. Uh, Vice President Harris in a speech recently said that women were being arrested and facing prosecution for experiencing miscarriages. Ms. Sackler, do you know of a single instance where a woman has been arrested for having a miscarriage or getting health care for that? No, treatment for miscarriage is allowed under the law. And there have been instances where um, I think that one example of that that's been pointed to is misleading because the woman, I think she was in Ohio, um, the charges against her were not abortion related. Um, and so it, it's misleading to use that as an example. It's not only misleading, but it scares women away from getting access to health care. And it leads women to not go get health care treatment when they desperately need it. Yeah, I think for context, what they're trying to say is they posted this because everybody is saying that Trump is going to put in the law that he's going to deny women health care. You know, in case of a miscarriage or any kind of health situation dealing with pregnancies. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's, it's ridiculous the amount of misinformation people have on this man. This morning, a focus on Fruit Loops by Robert Kennedy Jr., who's expected to take a major role overseeing public health in the new Trump administration. Why do we have Fruit Loops in this country that have 18 or 19 ingredients and you go to Canada and it's got two or three? Kennedy has raised concerns about the health effects of processed foods. He's not alone. Protesters recently gathered outside Kellogg's demanding artificial dyes be removed from the cereal. I'm here for the mom all the moms who struggle to feed their children healthy food without added chemicals. But experts warn not to jump to conclusions. If you compare a box of Fruit Loops from the United States and Canada, you will see they have roughly the same number of ingredients. The big difference is in what is being used for dyes. In Canada, it's a natural dye, such as carrot, watermelon, or blueberry juice. Whereas in the United States, they're using artificial dyes, like Red 40, Blue 1, and Yellow 5 and 6. Studies have claimed those dyes could cause behavioral problems in some kids. The FDA has said most kids have no adverse effects, and Kellogg says its ingredients meet federal standards. But it's those standards Kennedy apparently wants to focus on, saying this yesterday about the staff at the... And we wonder why our kids are so difficult to control nowadays, especially if you're my age and you have, like, teenagers that's, like, 15, 16... I, pretty much the whole generation X. That's why these kids are the way they are. But this is all true though. This this is not misinformation. All of these ingredients that are in this food can are it is affecting our children. 
And that's why our children are acting out the way that they do. EA's nutrition department. In some categories of worker, their entire departments, like the nutrition departments at FDA, that are that have to go. Um, that are are not doing their job. They're not protecting our kids. His potential future boss saying this about the power RFK could have. I'm going to let him go wild on health. I'm going to let him go wild on the food. Back in Trump's previous administration, Trump rolled back former First Lady Michelle Obama's healthier school lunch plan. But with RFK, Trump appears to be taking a step in a different direction. In recent years, Americans have become a little bit more aware about the impact of processed foods and what that may be having on rising rates of chronic disease and obesity. But what we need to remember is that processed foods diet is not the only culprit for the rise in chronic disease. We also have to pay attention to environment, genetics, the fact that children are more sedentary now, they're on their screens. RFK has also pushed to remove fluoride from drinking water. And he's a vaccine skeptic, but he said yesterday he won't be taking away anyone's vaccines. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Well, I would just only hope that with the vaccines that they would do a little more you know, extensive research on it before just giving it to the public. That's my only thing. Either that's an island full of mermaids, elephant seals, or semen, because it look like all of them, if you ask me. So let me get this right. Although the overturning of Roe v. Wade was a Supreme Court decision, okay, we're accrediting it to Trump, we're accrediting it to the Republican Conservative Party, right? Okay. Which all that rule- Which means Trump had nothing to do with it. It was a Supreme Court ruling. And other people fought to overturn it not him why is everybody tying everything to him like i already knew this stuff but i just don't know why people tied this stuff to him they just want to find a reason to hate him i think that's just that's what i think but did has made abortion less accessible so in certain states certain rules it's going to be different depending on what state you live in okay that's fine I understand not liking that or wanting to change that or wanting a different access to health care. But the answer in which I've seen on TikTok women have came up with is we're joining the 4B movement. So let me get this right. Now that abortion access has been limited, now we're choosing not to sleep with men. Nobody can be a HOE anymore. See, the women were being HOEs and there were no consequences if they gotten pregnant. They could just waltz on down to the abortion clinic and boop, boop, boop. That's it. But now things have changed. They want to join the 4B movement and just want to withhold all the cooter from the men. That's crazy. We've been telling y'all to do that, though. Is the chance of getting pregnant and having to keep it and, you know, having a baby is higher now. So now we're saying we're done sleeping with men, dealing with men, talking to men, which nobody was putting a gun to your head and making you do in the first place, but okay. So the Republicans were right. So the conservatives were right. Like, so wouldn't this make the argument that 
the promiscuity and sleeping with random men, which we shouldn't be doing that no way. Like we should not be doing that whether you have access to abortion or not. Like unless you feel confident that you are not getting pregnant, was weren't we always concerned about getting pregnant? Or are we saying that having access to abortion made us not really care? Are we being for real right now? Basically, that's what they are saying. Having access to abortion made them not care about being promiscuous. That's it. And that's a sad argument. Well, because it's been overturned, we're now turning away from men. Um, I think the Republicans are right. That's what they've been begging everybody to do in the first place and stop sleeping around. Like, are you serious? Period. Period. If this isn't a spit on all of you Kamala and Biden supporters, take a good fucking look. In the last attempt, they want to send $6 billion to Ukraine before they leave office. That is their priority. They're telling you our priority is to send money to fucking Ukraine, not to fix the roads, not to take care of the people in Maui or North Carolina or Florida or any U.S. citizen homelessness. No, 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 no. The last attempt, this is pretty much the last thing that people will remember you for. This is like your legacy. They chose to go send six fucking billion dollars to Ukraine. You should be happy that Trump won. Hey, look at him. Let's show America how much we didn't give a damn by sending six more billion to Ukraine before we leave. Bet they'll get a kick out of that. I mean, come on, man. How much spit do you need in your face before you realize that that party was never for you? Mr. Speaker, can I begin by congratulating President-elect Trump on his historic election victory? As the closest of allies, the UK and US will continue to work together to protect our shared values of freedom and democracy. We first we congratulate President Trump for the victory, and we are looking forward to work with him, with the administration. We have major tasks ahead of us. The enemies of the United States are the enemy of Israel, and I'm sure we will continue to work together. Dazu gratuliere ich Ihnen. President Trump wird sein Amt in einer Zeit großer Herausforderungen und Krisen antreten. Deshalb hat eine Präsidentschaftswahl in den USA immer Auswirkungen auf über Amerika hinaus. Están pues las noticias de que ganó el presidente Trump, pero de todas maneras nosotros vamos a esperar el día de hoy a que termine en algunos estados de contarse y poder dar ya el comunicado oficial. Everybody but that last one seemed like they were happy for Trump. And I don't know. Maybe it's because of the wall. Border thing. I don't know. What y'all think? About to regret their vote. And that's because so many people went and voted on the, uh, what you call it, on early voting. Now, God said the line is whoever votes for Trump he said, I'm saving them. I'm covering them. It's just like when they came and got the firstborn. He said they put blood on their door. Today, I'm telling you to go put some oil on your, on your door. If you voted for Trump, put oil on your door. God said everybody that voted for Kamala, he said you better repent suddenly. He said sickness, illness, and disease is about to hit you. He said death is about to come suddenly. He said these are the people that are not with me, that straddle the fence, that don't know me. They pretend to be of God. They pretend to know me. He said I'm drawing the line and the line is whoever rejects the truth that I have given them in front of Trump. He said, I, I have already chosen their pit in hell. This is why the earthquake is finna come, because it's finna open up and allow people to fall in. God is allowing this to happen because he's drawing the line and he's about to protect the people who are voting for Trump. And I, I know y'all don't like this and y'all probably feel like it ain't God, but that's why I said, make sure you put I am grown when I come in here. I said, when, are you grown? That's all I asked you to put. Because when you grown, you take accountability and you obey God. When you a child, you get in your feelings and you get mad because you childish. And God said, this is how you finna determine if they are of me. This is how you finna know if they have discernment. This is how you know if they really walk that walk and talk that talk. God said, this is how you gonna know if this is a real child of God. Not one that pretend to be. Not one that make it look good. Not one that been in church all their life and they still in religion and tradition. God said, I'm drawing the line. The line is the election. The line is if you 
vote for Kamala, you are about to get sick, ill, or it's finna be a disease. God said deaths are about to happen suddenly. They already been happening. But God said because I'm releasing this word, because it's coming out of my mouth, he said he's about to do it so quickly. He said so much stuff is about to happen so quickly. He said that's how you gonna know the line was drawn. If your house was not touched, if your house don't get touched, this is how you know you... Hey, them words from the apostle right there. And she was speaking with such conviction. I felt it in my bones. So I would like to start by congratulating President-elect Trump on his impressive victory this morning. The Prime Minister... Y'all hear them yells? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They did not like the current administration. I don't know what Biden them did, man. But they destroyed so many relationships. They should never be able to run again, ever. Foreign Secretary met him in September. Did the Foreign Secretary take that opportunity to apologize for making derogatory and scatological references, including, and I quote, Trump is not only a woman-hating, neo-Nazi, sympathizing sociopath, he is also a profound threat to the international order. And if he did not apologize, will the Prime Minister do so now on his behalf? Yeah. Woo! Ooh, Mr. Speaker, oui. there will be many issues on which the Leader of the Opposition and I disagree, but there will be issues that do unite this House on national security and Ukraine, and I do look forward to working closely with her on that, and I will provide her with the information that she needs to discharge uh, her duties. That's the right thing for the country, and it's far more important than party politics. You know what, man? I gotta say this real quick, because it's like, since since Trump won, it's, it's a breath of fresh air for a lot of people, not just us, but people in, in, in at the UN meetings, it's like that. Do you hear the cheers? The past four years, when I watch those meetings, it's been quiet, serious. Like the fear energy was high in the room. Like you don't even see that. They smiling. They happy. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. You can't tell me it wasn't ordained. It, it had to be. See, that's when things went up creek. That's when inflation went up because of her. You heard it right there out of her mouth. She made the last deciding vote on the Inflation Reduction Act. And it was supposed to reduce the inflation, but what it did was it made it worse. It made it worse. And the people who voted against it knew it was gonna make it worse. But she had to come in with her unprepped ass. That is the vote that changed your life. That is the vote. That changed her life. She can't respond to it, so she blames price gouging. She doesn't blame herself. She voted. She's the one who did this to you. That well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. You see what I'm saying? And she never, ever, one time took no accountability for that last vote. She never took it. She, like he said, she blamed it on price, price gouging. And it wasn't price gouging. It was her. They're not price gouging. When inflation goes up, the, 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 the stores have to charge more because now they're paying more for the product. So, which means we got to pay more. That's, it's simple, man. Supply and demand is super high. So when supply and demand is super high, when inflation goes up, then they got to put extra cost on it to make it balance out so they can still make a profit to keep the store running. Otherwise, they lose profit, store closes down. This is simple stuff, man. But she was the deciding factor, man. And I'm not saying that she probably didn't have some good intentions with the Reduction Act. But I don't think she fully understood the the magnitude of what she was doing. I don't think she did. 
I don't even understand how she became the majority leader. But she did. <laughs> but you know what? It is what it is, man. But y'all seen it, man. Y'all already know that I'm trying to bring all of this content back up because uh, this platform has uh, put a warning on my page for that video for talking about yeah, I don't even, I can't even say it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. It starts with a C and ends with numbers. So, yeah, I can't be speaking on those type of things. And, and these are the things that Trump are going to try to change for us content creators. Hopefully that everything works out the way it's supposed to, man. So with that being said, man, I could rant, but I won't. And with that being said, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description. Follow all of my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person. And if you want to see more dope videos, go click on that last video that I re-uploaded because they snatched it down. Go do it.